the request I granted to wait three hours if a verdict is reached before the verdict is announced. Uh, it seems to me that if I don't tell them in advance that they could tell us at 4 o'clock someday that they have a verdict and then we would say, oh, uh, we're going to wait three hours and they will not have made plans to stay here till 7 or actually 8 because it'll take, uh, if they reach verdicts on all the counts, it'll take a while um, for me to read the verdicts. So um, it just seems like it makes sense to plan ahead uh, to say to them um, that in the event that they reach a verdict that um, we'll need three hours to get everybody, to give everybody plenty of time to get here or enough time to get here. Uh, do the parties have any thoughts on that? I, the, the situation I want to avoid is that they return a verdict, say, at 4, uh, one afternoon or at 5, and then we say um, we have to wait three hours, and then they say we can't stay three hours, so we'll come back tomorrow. And then at that point, I would be in a position where I would have to send them home uh, knowing what the verdicts are, uh, and I would have to tell you, come back tomorrow so that I can read the verdicts at 9 a.m. Everyone would know they've reached verdicts, and I don't think that's a good situation for them to go home and to then say to them, but you can't talk to anyone about it and uh, have that risk. So I think the better course would be to say in advance, here's how it's going to work, uh, and I'm not going to put any limits on your deliberations, but to the extent that you reach uh, any verdicts, um, it'll be a few hours before we can announce them. So what do the parties think? We agree with that suggestion, Your Honor. All right. Does the defense have a thought on this? We would object, Your Honor. I think the concern is just that this may affect their deliberations in some way, and so we would prefer to just let them deliberate as they, you know, as they do. Well, I, I don't know how it would affect it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell them that they're not going to be limited in any way, and I have two situations here, neither one of which is um, a situation we want, and I think that the best situation of the two is to tell them in advance how it's going to work and they can plan ahead and they can do whatever they want in terms of um, if and when they reach a verdict. I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I thought about this a lot and I, I don't see how it prejudices anyone and I don't see how it, it affects their deliberations at all. It's just telling them in advance this is how it's going to work and I, I'm not going to say why we're waiting three hours. I'm just going to say, other than to say that we're going to give people enough time to get here, the parties and people, everyone, enough time to get here. So um, I, I think be, be between the two situations that, that uh, are possible, I, I would prefer to go with the one where we announce, we tell them in advance how we're going to proceed. So that's, that's how I'll do it. I, I actually also don't think it's fair to them to wait and, you know, to tell them until in the event they reach a verdict that they have done so. Uh, because if they reach a verdict at four or five, again, I don't think it's fair. They will not have made plans in advance. I'm sure they'll feel like, well, we wish we would have known. Uh, so I just, um, I, I think it makes sense to, to tell them in advance. So that, that's what I'll do. All right, is there anything else uh, from the parties that we need to chat about on behalf of the people? No, Your Honor, thanks. Uh, Mr. King, uh, do you prefer to call your investigator first and then publish some of the exhibits that you want to publish in full or in part, or how do you want to proceed, or Ms. Higgs? Yes, Your Honor, we're going to be publishing the exhibits uh, throughout his testimony. Oh, okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Um, and as the exhibits are published, if they're lengthy, I would ask that he, I mean, he can remain on the witness stand or he can step down. Um, we'll do the shortest ones first and the longest one at the end. Okay. I'll, I'll let you um, decide how you want to proceed in terms of the order of publication. Uh, and then I'll let you inform me 
that you've decided not to play the other video in its entirety, the one that started playing the other day. So you can just, uh, uh, I'll, I'll in initiate and say that you want to publish some uh, exhibits and you can tell me that, you know, you've decided that exhibit whatever it was, the videotape that started playing the other day a few days ago, that you've decided not to play it in its entirety. All right? All right, uh, let's bring the jury in if they're ready, please. If the jurors are ready, please. No, you're good. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an easy day for you. It looks like uh, one of our jurors, jurors 378, is not here yet. So rather than keep you standing, why, don't, why doesn't everybody have a seat? I'm going to step down. As soon as that juror is here and we're ready to go, then I'll take the bench again. All right? Okay, the court will be in recess. Thanks, everyone. All right. Um, Ms. Higgs, you may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The defense would recall um, Mr. John Gonglack. Good morning again. Te you've testified before in this trial, but why don't you remind us of your full name, please? Sure. It's John Gonglack. Last name is G-O-N-G-L-A-C-H. Thank you. Ms. Higgs, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Um, I have just a couple of questions for you with regard to the... Um, what, what we've sort of called or has been titled the galactic colonization um, writings that you, we introduced through you the other day, and that was Exhibit DTR-94, okay? Yes. Now, um, when did you get these from Mr. Holmes? I received them from him on February 28th of 2014. Okay. Now, did he volunteer to you that, oh, I've got these writings, please come get them. No, absolutely not. Okay. Um, it, did, did you have to kind of pry that information out of him? Yes. I, I, I actually went in there and was visiting him, and then during the visit I had, had asked him, you know, how things were going and what he's been up to, and just always very minimal answers, and then I actually asked him, about the writings, or if he had been writing in his cell. Objection, if hearsay is coming, Your Honor. Uh, it's untimely, overruled. Now, um, why, did, why was it that you thought to ask him if he had been writing in his cell? So for some time we were receiving um, video from the jail through Discovery, and on those videos it was a fixed camera in his cell that showed him 24 hours surveillance of him in his cell. And during some of those clips, he could, it looked like he was writing on a tablet or a notepad. Uh, and that's, that's why I asked him about that. Okay. Um, did you, was that on, uh, during the time frame of sort of July to August of 2012? Yes. Now, were you able to see him on any video in September or October of 2012? No, and so at some point uh, near the end of August, the jail stopped uh, re recording or copying the footage of that cell, 
And so we only received uh, discs of that video footage up until near the end of August. And then after that, we weren't provided anything. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this point, uh, I have some more questions for Mr. Gonglak, but I think it's appropriate at this point to publish for the jury uh, D-TR-94, and we do have 19 copies to just hand out and let the jury read through. Okay. And are you intending to have uh, give the jurors a chance to review the exhibit, the a copy of the exhibit, or are you intending to continue to ask questions while they have the exhibit in hand? No, I, I think it's appropriate for them to just review it. Okay. Why don't you give it to my staff, please, and then uh, Ms. Robinson and Ms. Robinson will distribute them. And members of the jury, this is the same procedure that we've used with other exhibits, where we're going to give you a copy of the exhibit, and then we're going to retrieve that copy after you've had an opportunity to review it. This will just expedite the publication of the exhibit. Your Honor, do you have an indication of how long the jury can review this for? Or if Mr. Gonglack needs to stay on the stand, it's fine if he does. Mr. Gonglack, you can step down or you can stay there. Whatever's most comfortable I'm, I'm fine for you. here. Okay. While the jury is doing that, would Mr. King and Mr. Orman please approach?
Your Honor, can I approach Mr. King? Yes.
Yes. All right, folks, it looks like uh, most of you have finished reviewing that exhibit, almost all of you. Uh, 
Is anyone still reviewing it? Just one of you? Okay. Do you, I'll give you a few more minutes if you need a couple more minutes. Okay, the record should reflect that the jury has now finished reviewing Exhibit D-DR-94 and my staff has retrieved all of the copies of the exhibit that were distributed. Ms. Hicks, you may proceed with the rest of your direct examination of Mr. Gonglack. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, sir, th this is not something that you reviewed with Mr. Holmes, those writings, is that right? That's correct. Left that to the doctors. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit, just a couple questions about the videos that um, you received from the jail staff uh, from November, okay? Okay. And you're familiar with those three videos that have been introduced into evidence. I think it's DTR-67, 68, which the jury's already seen, as well as D-TR-69. That's great. Okay. Now, were those the, the, the sum total of the video that was preserved by the jail during that November time period? So yes, during that time, so aside from the video surveillance that was continuously going in his cell, there were three other separate incidents that occurred in November that we received on, uh, in DVD form. <coughs> And so there was no other video um, in November that we received from the jail. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, now, with regard to um, D-TR-69, that's the one video that the, the jury has not seen. Um, is, that a, is that a pretty long video? Yes. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a couple of hours long. And again, it's a, a camera that's fixed in a, in a different cell and it's running continuously and that I think it's a little over two hours okay. in length. And is it is it fair to say that sort of the last part of that video is just Mr. Holmes sitting in an emergency restraint chair while the deputies monitor him? That's correct. So they put they place him in an ERC or the emergency restraint chair and then they leave him alone in the cell for a very long time and so a great portion of that video on the tail end is just that. Okay. Your Honor, we would like to publish um, the first part of D-TR-69 at this point. Um, if, if the jury, the jury will have it available to them in the jury room should they wish to view the entire thing, but for time's sake, we would just publish the first part. Okay, you may proceed. Thank you. And There's no sound, right? That's correct. All right. Uh, did, did any of the videos from the jail have any sound on them? No, no audio. Okay. All right, would you like me to dim the lights, Ms. Hayes? Yes, please.
Okay, the record should reflect that the defense just finished uh, publishing at least part of D-TR-69. Ms. Hicks? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, after that, you were watching that video, after that is when the deputies put him in a, in a, in a restraint chair and leave him for the next several hours uh, while they monitor him, is that right? Yes, and I think it just ends with them coming back in, they take him out of the chair and kind of put him in the corner and then leave the room. Okay. Um, last, I just want to ask you a couple questions about, um, you recall talking to the jury the other day about D-TR-95, um, which is the surveillance video from Denver Health? Yes. Okay. Um, now, uh, you also recall seeing Dr. Weintraub testify with regard to um, Mr. Holmes being at Denver Health Medical Center, is that right? That's correct. And, and you recall that he testified that he saw Mr. Holmes on November 19th at around 11 in the morning, is that right? Yes, I think he saw him just a few hours before I did. Okay. Um, do you recall Mr. Dr. Weintraub talking about um, addressing with Mr. Holmes during his treatment of him that he had uh, remained in restraints, put a blanket over his head, told them he had been seeing shadows and may have been frightened. Do you recall that testimony? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, and just to give the jury some context, this video from Denver Health Medical Center that is the subject matter of D-TR-95, um, that uh, time frame is earlier in the morning of that same day that Dr. Weintraub saw him? That's correct. That, that part of the video, I think, was in the early morning hours of the 18th going into the 19th. Okay. And so then he the, met with him several hours after that okay. in the afternoon. So either late night of November 18th into early morning hours of November 19th. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, Your Honor, we would ask to publish for the jury d tr dash. Um, 75, not 95, sorry. 95, okay. And how long is this one? Um, this one is about 30 minutes is my recollection. 30 minutes, and you're going to play it in its entirety? Yes. Okay, and again, no audio, correct? That's correct. All right. Um, and just for, so I can clarify for the jury, Mr. Gonglack, the, the surveillance that we received from Denver Health Medical Center didn't have any audio on it, is that right? That's correct. All right, members of the jury, everyone okay uh, for another half hour? Does anyone need a break within the next half hour? No? Okay. Would you like me to dim the lights? Yes, please. Okay.
the record should reflect that the defense just finished publishing Exhibit D-DR-95. Ms. Hicks, do you have any other questions for Mr. Gonglack? Your Honor, I do not. Does the prosecution have any cross-examination? Your Honor, very briefly. Mr. Gonglack, when you went to the jail to visit the defendant on February 24th of 2014 and picked up his jail writings, he was aware that you worked for his attorneys? Yes. And those are the same people sitting to my left, correct? Yes, ma'am. And the jail videos that we've seen in the hospital videos were all taken in um, November of 2012, correct? That's right. The one that we just saw um, at the Denver Health actually gapped about a three and a half hour period, is that correct? Yes, you're right. The video was about half an hour, but it, the total time was probably three or four hours. And all of the videos that we've seen this morning from November of 2012, those were, all, those were all taken almost four months after the defendant killed 12 people and shot a dozen more at the Century 16 Theater, correct? Objection, Your Honor, to the form of the question. Are you meant to? Sustain. Rephrase your question, please. These November 12th videos all um, occur almost four months after the shootings that occurred at the Century 16 Theater. Isn't that correct? Yes. Thank you. No, nothing further. Do you have any redirect, Ms. Higgs? No, Your Honor, I don't. Thank you. All right. And the jury does not appear to have any questions for this witness. Um, so, Mr. Gunglack, thank you. You thank may you. step down. Mr. King, call your next witness, please. Judge, we have decided not to play any more of the exhibit. Um, which was, hold on one minute, the TR-76, which was the uh, video of Mr. Holmes in the um, cell at the Aurora Police Department. Uh, and so at this time, the defense rests. All right, thank you. All right, members of the jury, let's go ahead and take our morning break at this time, okay? Please make sure that you comply with all my admonitions during the break, and I'll see you back here in 20 minutes. Thank you. Please be seated, everyone. The record should reflect that the jury has exited the courtroom. Does the prosecution plan to present uh, any rebuttal evidence, Mr. Bruckler? Uh, Your Honor, um, the people uh, don't need, see the need to put on a rebuttal case at this time. Okay. All right, so what we'll do is when the jury comes back in, I'll ask you that. And you can uh, say that you're not introducing any uh, rebuttal evidence. And then I'll have some instructions for the jury in terms of reminding them about the uh, admonishments I have been giving them throughout the trial uh, and also uh, instructions about scheduling and what to expect uh, next week on Tuesday in terms of closing argument, um, in terms of um, the alternates, although I'm not going to announce who the alternates are until after closing arguments, but the fact that we're going to have to, um, by statute, sequester the alternates uh, and keep them here while the uh, other jurors are deliberating uh, and that sort of thing. All right? Yes, sir. Is there anything else at this time before we take a break on behalf of the people? Can I have one moment, Your Honor? Yes. I presume you're going to tell him that. Just, just a point of clarification. And I, I presume you're going to do this, but once we get past closing and there's the issue with the alternates and sequestration, that there would be some instruction that if there is a penalty phase, they would also be required to come back and be, I guess, available for that? I, I, have, I have mentioned that to them before, and so I'm sure they're aware of it. Yes, sir. Um, what I was planning on saying is simply that there's still a chance that they may be needed. Um, somebody may become un unavailable. 
uh, for example, during deliberations and leave it at that. And I think they'll get the point. Yes, sir. So anything on behalf of the defense? That's okay. Right. No? Okay. Enjoy your break. I'll see you in about 17. Thank you.